to me. So, um, what I was talking about was that when I will not be at the <laughs> event for your mom's birthday yeah. that you're planning to use to do for her. And I just would love to see pictures from that. Like a whatever. It can be emailed to me, texted me, whatever. And uh, when I talked to your mom yesterday, I don't know if you were standing next to her or whatever. Um, she did start to cry, by the way. And she said that you, she's really proud of you, and that you've been through a lot. And that you have persevered. You've you've gotten through it, yeah. and you've been able to maintain, um, hold on to your sanity, hold on to doing what you're supposed to do, which is hard, especially at your age. So, I asked you yesterday to do a pay it forward with the money that you won and I w actually wanted you to if you could get it set up where somebody records you but you told me that it already happened yeah. so can you tell me again what happened so I go on a run every day was I take one of the dogs and like I switch off every day and we were going and he stopped me and he asked me, he goes, excuse me sir, do you have any spare change? And I pulled out my wallet and I grabbed the money and I goes, here you go. And then he goes, what's all this for? And he goes, I only asked for a couple, like some change. And I was like, well, you need it more than I do. And, and I'm just probably going to spend it real fast and you probably like weigh it out and buy food and all that. And he goes, and then he grabs, he grabs a couple of dollars, I don't remember, like I don't know how much it was. He takes a couple and then he gives it back. And I was like, no, this is yours, like you need this more than I do. And then he's all, well, I, he goes, what I want you to do is when you see another homeless person, give them some money too. And if they don't take it off, do it again. He goes, because you seem like a nice kid and you're always helping your mom out every time I walk past your house and everything. So do that for me, he goes. I won't take all this money so you could help out other people too. Wow. Wow. We weren't expecting that. You were just thinking, oh, here's my opportunity to do something good for somebody else. I'll just give him this money and it'll be over with. And now he's giving you an assignment. Yeah. Wow. How did that make you feel? Like it like inspired me to like do something. It did? Yeah. Okay. So um you said you see this guy every day? Yeah, every day. Where is he does he have a hangout spot? Does he live in the area? Um I'm not hundred percent sure but I always see him walking. And like he always looks all beat up and all scratched up and everything. Wow. Okay. And he's asked you for change before, and you yeah. didn't have change to give him. Yeah. Okay. So what would you say when he would ask you, and you didn't have anything? Um, I'm sorry, sir. I don't have. I can't help you out because like I'm struggling, and I don't have money myself. So. And he'd go, oh, okay, sir. I'm sorry to bother you, and I'd be like, no, it's fine. You're just trying to get by in life. Okay. Awesome. And so. Did you did you figure out how much money you're out now? Like how much he did take? Because I gave my mom seventy for the bills, mm -hmm. and then I haven't counted it yet. But he probably took like five, ten dollars, maybe. Okay. At the most. Okay. So you still have a little bit more yeah. to go. Ch so you changed his life for that moment, you know, or maybe you you were able to get him food. You don't know what he bought with that, but hopefully he bought something to sustain his life, right? Maybe he needed, who knows, you know, a roll of toilet paper. You never know. Like, I, that's something that I would want to do is like a collection of toilet paper to hand out to 
homeless people? I never think about that. Like, they're going to the bathroom in some pretty not sanitary places, and it really sucks to not have anything to clean yourself with. Even maybe baby wipes or something. That's a little, it has the, you can actually clean yourself with. Um, okay. So, do you want to follow what he suggested, or did you have a different idea in mind as to how you wanted to help somebody? I mean, I want to follow what he suggested, but at the same time, I want to do something bigger. Okay. And so, why do you want to follow what he suggested? What is that doing for you? It gives me, like, a peace of mind, because, like, I know, like, oh, like, I helped this person, and, like, like, I don't want to seem, like, all stubborn and greedy and all that, like, have power, but, like, it gives me a good peace of mind saying, oh, I... I did something to help this person. I I did something to make this person to help this person live another day. Okay. Cool. All right. So um, and then the thing when you said you want to do something bigger. So you've done you had this really awesome experience yesterday, and um, to to have the sense that you want to do something bigger is a sense of empowerment. Okay. What do you think it was that gave you that sense of power? Was it actually having the money in your hand as a tool, or was it something else? Like, it just, like when, like when I got home, like, I'm not gonna lie, like, yeah, I was thinking about, oh, I could do this, I could do that, but and then, like, I really sat down and I thought to myself, wow, my mom could use this money for something, or the groceries, or gas, or her car to go to work every day, or something. So I pulled my mom to the side, and I was like, Mom, I need to talk to you. And I t explained to her, and she was, well, I'd like to talk to your teacher. And so I gave her your number, and she talked to you, and she goes, well, I talked to your teacher, and she explained what happened and all that. And she goes, she goes, well, I hope you um, do something wise with your money. And I was all speaking of that, and I pulled out my wallet, and I counted out 70, and I was like, here. And she goes, what's this for? And I was like, for you, for do whatever you want with it. And she goes, well, you keep it. She goes, I was like, no, ma. I was like, I'd rather have a place to sleep and lay my head up at night than have materialistic things. Holy moly. Holy moly. That's really big. That's something that we take for granted. You know? Yeah. Um, and so you kept 30. And I'm um, just curious about that number. Why 30? I didn't, I didn't really like... Because like... Because, like, I pulled out the $50 bill that was in the money, uh -huh. and I was like, I'm going to give this to my mom, and then I saw her. I kept looking at my wallet. And it was still I, thick. Yeah, so I pulled out 10, 5, and I just kept going, and then, and then finally my mom walked in, and she goes, well, well, I talked to your teacher and all that, and I gave her the money. So, um, the reason why I was thinking you kept 30 was that you were going to keep 20 to do the assignment of go do pay it forward and 10 you know yeah. to get whatever you wanted you know and it's okay if because i had 20 dollars in my wallet and it was just ones too so it looked like a lot yeah so that's why i just pulled it out and like handed it to him i didn't even count it or anything i just grabbed a pinch and pulled it out so if you were to go and interview him and ask him, you know, how many people cross your path every day? How often do people actually give? What do you think his response would be? Not that many, probably. He's just another guy trying to buy drugs or something. They're, they're probably thinking. Mm -hmm. Interesting. All right, so um, do you have enough to do what you wanted to do for your mom? Yeah, okay. and I'm going to work this weekend too so. oh you're gonna earn some more money yeah okay and you have people to help you out with getting the planning done and yeah. every cooking and her girlfriend yeah Mom's girlfriend yeah and the nails the nails i don't think she could do it because she's a cna oh just to wear gloves 
But she can get a short manicure. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Oh, she, she can get a short manicure. They can. They, she doesn't have to get the acrylic nails. Yeah. They are able. My mom doesn't do acrylic nails, and she gets a, uh, you know, like this length. They do the cuticles and make it feel nice and paint yeah. them pretty. Yeah, because she's wearing gloves all day. I totally understand that you don't want that anyway if you're in the healthcare business because the germs that go under the nails are pretty raunchy. Yeah. All right, so you want to do something big. What is it? Do you know what it is yet? Or you just right now just know that this one experience wasn't enough like, and you want more? I want to help change people. This is like the, the homeless people's lives. Like, I don't know, like give them blankets. And like what you said with your son, he gave out those flags. Yeah. Like that, that gave me a little push too to like, dang, if her son could do it, then I could do it. No. Oh, cool, I'll tell him. Uh, that reminded me, like when you said that you were, you told your mom that you wanted to have a place to sleep. Um, I had to remind my son that night that we get to go back into a warm vehicle, drive to a warm house, and sleep yeah. in a warm bed. It, just because he was uncomfortable because the wind was blowing for a little bit, he could deal with it. You know what I mean? It led me to also think about this particular class yesterday when we were standing outside looking at the tree, and it was hot, um, and people sought shade, and it was very easy to just walk a few feet over to the awning and be in the shade, and it made me reflect on the fact that um, I used to, the job I had before I was a teacher, was in the county morgue and I had to help out with the autopsies on um, everybody but especially on people who died in the desert crossing to come to the United States and those were some of the most horrible cases that I ever had to see because you could actually see the suffering um, you could see worn out feet you could see the results of dehydration you could see this, these things and one of the things that drives me insane with my students every year is when the weather changes and we're complaining about that it's hot we're never you know more than a hundred feet away from an air-conditioned building yeah. we can turn on the faucet and get water we could drink that water out of the toilet if we needed to okay. We could, we could drink, if we needed to, drink toilet water, because it's the same water that's coming out of the faucet. Whereas somebody who is risking their life to come to this country and cross our desert, first of all, may not know how far they have to go, may not pack appropriately. If they pack appropriately, it may be too heavy along the way. Do you know how much water weighs? No. I think it weighs eight pounds per gallon. So imagine carrying an eight pound thing with you through a walk. Yeah, because when I used to go hunting with my dad, when like we would like talk, I'd always see black gallons like uh -huh. under trees and everything, and and he'd like my dad would pick it up and drink it and then close it, put uh -huh. it back, and then I'd be like, why'd you drink that for? Like, what is it? Like, is it alcohol or what? And he goes, no, it's water for the illegals that cross, that walk through here. So people come and fill it up for them. And he, and he goes, that reminds me, and he, he grabbed his water pouch, and he filled it back up, and he closed it. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, we were walking up the hill, and these guys were coming down. Mm -hmm. And they grabbed the water, and sat there for a little bit, drank it, and went on their way. Yeah, so the people crossing the desert has been happening forever. Yeah. And the the aid groups that go out there and put water out there. Uh, there's people who go and put water out there and then there's people who go right behind them and destroy the water, by the way. Yeah. So it, that's a very complicated thing that's happening out in the desert. It's happening right now. Right now. And it happens in the winter time too. People are dying from hypothermia because they don't have enough shelter or clothing or whatever. So when we're here doing work 
and we're going to be we're actually going to be working out by the wash doing this big project you keep hearing about it and once you see them start out there you'll get excited I know it's hard to get excited about something you can't see yeah. but it's going to be freaking hot and we'll have water and we'll have hats and we'll have the ability to walk back to our school and you know be in the commons where it's cold and but I'm wondering how many of the volunteers I'm going to have to deal with you know just saying it's too hot I'm not going to come out there like how can we address that how could we address that to get people to you know understand that this is something good that we're doing we don't have to be out there all the time. We're not suffering. I don't know. I don't know. It's going to be hard. Yeah. We're going to have to work at 3 o'clock in the morning <laughs> before the sun gets up. With like flood land. Yeah. All right. So just keep me posted on the festivities on the 17th. And is it the 17th? No, because um, we did it where she's going to have the weekend off. So it's going to be on the 23rd. Oh. Okay, cool. Yeah. I think the 17th is a Monday, too, isn't it? Yeah. Right after Easter. Okay. So, that's the um, day my husband and I got married. April 17th, 2001. Congratulations. Yeah, 2001. So, we are celebrating our sweet 16. On the 17th. When your mom's celebrating her birthday. Alrighty. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you talking to me because this is going to be awesome.